it, it's just kind of that is friction and, and kind of a blocker to to executing and getting it out there and and the the whole you know broadly speaking it doesn't matter with that particular issue yeah. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Well, I'm just um, thinking about how I can, you know, look at all the testimonies and do that because I'm quite interested in what you said about looking at what's worked in the past and kind of bringing, um, you know, making it a bit congruent and like uh, bringing it together like a like a course or or something like a Mm. I don't know, like con- some some sort of content that can come to me. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and how are you finding? How are you finding? Kind of looking at the testimonies and and trying to break those down. And did you kind of publish any of those uh, again on any of your platforms at all? No, I haven't. No, I'm going to do it this week. Yeah. Um, and that's a, I, I need to get to you know, like when you get this thing in your head that. It has to be like perfect, and um, oh, and I still face that thing like, oh, am I boasting about myself? Yeah, and I, you know, and I don't want to come across that way, but I don't. And then I'm like, do I refer to myself in the third person on behalf of my company? Mm. If if there was someone else doing it for me, they would have found it easy, like a, a marketing person or something. Yeah. Um, I, I think all those things are like fine to to feel, and it, it's a case of breaking each one of them down a little bit by just making a decision either way. So, you know, for example, do I write in the third person or not? It, it's just kind of that is friction and, and kind of a blocker to to executing and getting it out there, and and the the whole you know broadly speaking, it doesn't matter with that particular issue. Yeah. So it, it wouldn't matter if, for example, if there's good information in that in that um, kind of testimony already, then you could even just be like, here's a testimony we received, right? Send. And like not overly, you know, think too much about it. Then next week, you know, so I did this interview and it went right. Like it, it doesn't really necessarily matter so long as the content is there. And I think with the the kind of the other points as well, like bro- broadly speaking, it's a it's about you know trying to to pull down those brick walls that have been built by just making a decision either way um, and and just yeah. going with it. Um, but yeah, it's com- it's it's difficult. It is difficult because. Even me, like sometimes I'll think, well, have I, am I saying something of value? You know, and and I think sometimes we worry too much about creating something unique and a, a, a and, and something special. And and broadly speaking, yeah. you're just documenting that these things have happened. So if you think from the documenting perspective, it's easy because you're just stating facts that have happened. So had this yeah. great conversation with this individual that had this particular scenario, here's what she thought. You know, it could be very light. It doesn't need to be overly, you know, orchestrated into something elaborate because you know that this is one of a thousand posts you're going to do, right? So like, if if you're tripping up on number one, then how are you going to get to number a thousand, right? Because we know it's it's a volume game, but it's also a quality game, right? Um, so I think it's, can you, you, you know, even if, okay, the, the kind of, um, the, the blockers that you just kind of outlined, even if you just wrote those down in a, in a Google document or a piece of paper and just right now conclude, okay, so I am concerned about writing in the first person or the third person. Well, right now I'm going to say first person. So you write that down, that that's your answer. So anytime you have that, that in your mind, go back to that document. Well, I've decided that it's first person. In three weeks' time, you might decide to switch up, and we might be saying we everywhere, you know. But I guess in some ways, if you can try and conclude and make a decision on on what you're going to to do, and then that's then your decision. 
you know, you basically have a decision matrix of, well, I'm thinking about, do I write in the first or third? Let me go to that document. You know, oh, here it is. We write in the third. Let's go. Let's do this. You know? And I know that's the, the simplest one to, to pick out, of course. But yeah, ultimately, the, the, the slightly harder one is, you know, am I saying, am I bragging? Am I saying too much about myself? Well, ultimately, if you don't, you know, kind of, I don't want to say get over that because it's trivializing it. It's not like it is serious, right? It is a heavy thing. So if you're not able to, you know, go through that to get to the other end, then you will not get clients and you will have to go and work a full-time job. So do you want to do that? <laughs> exactly. No, no way. <laughs> exactly. So no way. again, can you, so the first mechanism is like, can you have, just make a decision. It doesn't matter either way because it's not detrimental. The we, the, the we or the me or the I is not detrimental. So making a quick decision because you've got things to move on with and then put that in a document. So next time you think about it, go back to that document. You said, okay, on the November 29th, I decided this. So it could be one section, one room. And then the second thing is, you know, worst case scenario type thinking. Um, so when I first switched from a, when I quit my full-time role and went into my business and started um, basically contracting as an easy switch, I basically was trying to think, what's the worst case scenario? And the worst case scenario for me was, oh, I can't pay the rent, so I'll go and move in with my wife into my parents' house. And that was still a place of privilege, right? It, I wasn't homeless. So then it kind of just decreases the pressure that you put on yourself, and then you're just much better at it. So I, I would say, you know, potentially that could be another tool to use. Like, if you don't tell people about what you're doing and more so it's the it's the stories and the and the value right we all connect with stories um so i'd recommend you know trying to just say this story might change someone's life it might impact someone someone might need to read this today right and and i think someone does need to read this today therefore i'm going to put it out there so you write this little blurb about this story about this transformation that's happened in this individual here it is and and try to to not think so much of like, you know, you're bragging about yourself. A lot of the time we we typically, we have a skewed perspective of our own things that we put out there and we're much harder on ourselves than reality. So yeah, I would say potentially use the whole, you know, if I don't get this out there, one, that person or people aren't going to benefit from this. And two, I'm going to have to go back to work a full-time job and I don't want to do that. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> those are some tools. I'm not sure, like, you know, whether yeah. or not that, that was I'm helpful. Smiling. <laughs> I'm smiling because uh, yesterday I had a coaching session with a client and she's uh, uh, wanting to write this bestseller and she, she wants to write a book, basically. she's uh, That's what she, and, but the, all that's limiting beliefs and self-doubt and all that is there. And I use the same thing that Tim Ferriss's uh, fear setting. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you've come across Tim Ferriss's model of fear setting, but not his like model. But I really scenario. like Tim Ferriss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's there's Same, someone else. That worst case scenario. Yeah, and it it doesn't need to be. You know, some people's uh, take on that is quite severe in the sense of you know, imagine people passing away. And I'm, I'm not saying that we should kind of, you know, get to that level, but some people tr trigger, you know, the, the get up and go by kind of imagining that, which I, I don't think that's necessarily the right thing. Um, but all, all you need to remember is, you know, broadly speaking, this is one post of a thousand. So it's not a big deal. It is a big deal, but it's also not a big deal. And just trying to, you know, lighten the perspective because you know you've got a, a, a like a big task, right? A content is a, an indefinite, like a, you know, endeavor that you're trying to to put out. You're always trying to tell stories. You're always trying to educate people and and kind of get them along and, and partnership in with them and stuff. So, yeah, there's there's a decade of this to come. So how can we just get over this? Because you know you need to kind of you know get more comfortable with this stuff generally, you know. And and, and sometimes that that's how I kind of give it to myself as well. So don't feel by any means that these are unique to you in regards to, oh, I'm the only one that feels these things. Lots of people feel, 
you know, that I'm not saying anything of value, you know, that I'm, that I, I shouldn't be bragging, you know, I, I had, mm-hmm. I think there's also the difficulty with them um, culturally, sometimes the cultural dynamics um, fit in mm-hmm. to that as well, you know, making sure you're humble, you know, and all that stuff, which can be a blocker. So I think it's all about switching the perspective of you have something of value. And if you had something of value, would you not be encouraged to share it? Because that's actually what you're doing. It's not that you're bragging about it. You're sharing it. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with that. And I, and I, I know, and I'm more mindful of it mm. um, with my clients. <laughs> mm. But when it comes to myself, I do check myself because it's so ingrained in us, like, from a very young age. Especially, like, um, you know, like, where I come from, it's just, like I'm of no consequence. That's a fact. Like, you know, if I wasn't there, there's no one's going to like, I mean, my immediate family might uh, be bothered, but not, it's not like it's going to shift the whole world. Mm. So, uh, so, and so I've got that at the back of my head, but that's why I want to do it as well. So it's like a double edged thing because I want to do it so that women like me who come from nothing and who have no, like family money and all that kind of a part paved for them mm. that they can actually you know feel like yes even i can step up and do this because she can do it from nothing <laughs> you know yeah. so i want to do it for that reason but at the same time that same reason is the thing that holds me back a little bit yeah. i'm working on it but i like that um practical approach of just looking at it as just one 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 thing, you know, is part of a thousand uh, things that I'm going to be posting and doing. And yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it's all, like I'm not sure if you're familiar with Myers Briggs, which is like a, a very top level personality yeah. test. I think typically what I see is, you, you know, in my own life as well, is when I'm stuck in the grit of like, you know, the detail, it's always about, you know, flipping to the big picture. So, you know, the second letter is N and S. You know, if you're stuck in the kind of an S, like, well, this needs to happen and I need to get this right. And basically perfection being the the killer of productivity, then it's a case of like coming out and giving yourself that big perspective. Mm -hmm. And the big perspective narrative in this perspective is, you know, that's one post of a thousand posts, you know? So what does that do to the kind of the, the blocker of trying to obtain perfection? And Ultimately, I think as well, like perfection is the thing that's blocking other people from benefiting. So it it is a case of, you know, trying to remember about, you know, how someone else may be inspired by this. Like like you're saying, you you want to inspire those people. And sometimes if they're not asking, like typically what I found in my career journey is I'm doing all this crazy stuff, this really interesting stuff, like running this business. I've not like my mom and dad didn't go to university and all that stuff. Like we were reasonably poor as, as, as kids, but we, we got by like, and now I'm over here. Why is no one asking me about my journey? Right. Because they, they don't know, right. They, they, they don't know that, Oh, you were there and now you're over here. Everyone assumes that everyone's got it together, you know, and all those kind of narratives. So yeah, yeah. The, the whole difference between where you are and where you were is a lot of the time, a bunch of paperwork as well. Right. So just even getting that information out, like, did you know, it only takes 15 pounds to create a business. Like I didn't know that, you know, and the things that you think are trivial aren't necessarily trivial, right? Like someone might not know that, you know, they, they might be thinking, oh, it takes a lot of money, you know, or it does in other realms and it, it does, but yeah. to kick off a limited company to get that like respect of, there's this thing that I'm creating now. It just takes 15 quid and literally 15 minutes, you know, and it could be just little trivial things that you've done. Again, Mm -hmm. you've done these things. So you're not creating, you're documenting, you know, Hey, if you, if you were interested in in starting a business, did you know, it literally takes 15 minutes and it's 15 pounds. You know, that might be something very, very small. uh, And then Mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be overly engineered because you're just saying what you've done, which makes it a lot easier. And I'm trying to do that as well. You know, had this conversation this week, which I have, and we spoke about this. You, you know, it, it doesn't need to be, right, I need to come up with something super profound that's like separate to what I've been doing. So trying to have them both mm-hmm. c- connected, it just makes it easier. 
because it's it's really difficult yeah. to get over that hump. And in a month's time, you know, you might feel that you're back there again, thinking, you know, oh, well, do I write it like this or do I write it like this? And again, just keep switching perspectives to just keep on getting a, a good flow. But it's an age old problem. I think it's always difficult because, um, you know, these narratives haven't turned up overnight. You know, the idea yeah. that, you know, perfection is the goal. The idea that perfection is the goal. I'm not a perfectionist, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a perfectionist um, because I do like that iterative process of like, mm. oh, I'll try this and giving myself that freedom of like, find something, it didn't work, so what next? And also awesome. it quite fluid. Yeah. But the thing that um, I suppose, it, and I've noticed this, I went on, I'll, I'll just give you a quick example. So yeah, it is. on Saturday, um, I went for a meal with the group of women that I set up as a, Peer support group because in our area there's no peer support group for like women from ethnic minorities who are mm. professional women. There were there was there's a lot of support for like uh, in the community and families and that side. Yeah. But the, the professional women don't have that. So I just started that as an idea, and now it's part of a charity. They've like included it. Uh, I'm on I'm on the board, but still, awesome. they, uh, they've included it as part of their development. So the newer members who are joining us um, are, are not aware of that history of how we, it was just like a, an idea that manifested into this uh, part of an organization. Mm. Um, and it's only been the last three years that it's happened. But when they were doing a round of introductions and came to my turn, I found it very hard to articulate that. Mm. To say, I felt like, uh, I, and it wasn't me trying to be humble or I can't put my finger on what it was because it was like they were like saying oh this is all and I'm like yeah, it's not a big deal it's just a idea that came and I just made the idea happen because mm. I hate just sitting and talking about stuff you know sure. I want to like see a result yeah, yeah. so yeah yeah I hate that like sitting and talking about the same thing for like the next 10 years so um so that's why I just forced it to happen. And then they just took it as part of the thing. And now we've got specific funding to develop it. And we're looking at like more CPD training for professional women in the area. And so a lot of good is coming from it. That's awesome. Um, and I'm no longer leading on it. But I find it so hard to articulate that. Um, and when people say, oh, it was her idea that kicked this off. I'm like so embarrassed. I have no idea. Mm. I'm like, yeah, deflecting on someone, you know, cracking some stupid joke, which is my usual default, is crack a stupid joke and default, you know, deflect the attention. Mm. Um, I think I, I think that's fine. That. Yeah, that's that's fine. Like the most important thing is you recognize that it's happening. So the most important thing is like that's the first step of of many steps to kind of, you know like renew your mind in kind of getting over it uh, and it'll happen multiple times. The first important step is recognizing that it's happening. And if you recognize that oh, I say the stupid jo a joke to deflect, that's great because now you can start working on it, right? You you can actually get to grips with, with, with what's going on. And I would guess, you know, try and just delve a little bit deeper to be like, is it because you don't want to be, you know, and again, this might not be true, but is it that, you don't necessarily want people to rely on you or, or kind of, you know, come to you and, uh, and, and build that because you don't want to disappoint people. Is that why you don't want to be known for this stuff? Because you overall don't want to be in that position of like, you know, it, it, I'm not saying it is that again, uh, you, you I all know. Like, I like that actually. I like oh, yeah? that people would come to me Good. because I can like talk them through to whatever they, because I just have this thing that I can get whoever it is to wherever they want to get to. Awesome. But I think that it's like there's some part of me that's still like this. Um, I want to say like this. Uh, uh, what do you call? What mentality it is? You know, like this. Uh, like um, like from like from poverty. I don't know what 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 to say. Like there's some people poverty, say, there's a poverty mindset. Yeah, it's like something like where I feel like oh, no, you know, I'm not. But that can't be me, though I know it's me because mm. I've done it and I've pushed it. But when they all looked at me and they were like, 
oh, and she's the one who brought us all together, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, don't look at me. And I made a stupid joke and everybody will like, they forgot about it, which was fine. Yeah. But then I'm worried that it will show in other places because on the back of what we, uh, guessed, uh, last week I was sending all these emails out to people mm. that I know and stuff. And I sent you one as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really. Um, but um, I also signed up to attend a BNI networking thing in the local area. Great. I don't know if you've heard of them. It's like a national networking franchise. Mm. So different businesses come together and you just like pitch your business to other business owners and you help each nice. other. Yeah. Promote it. Mm. But now I'm just thinking when I'm in that situation and they say, and this is Penelope from Stimulus. And what's your business all about? And I'll be like, uh, I'll crack a stupid joke. At mm. that time. I, I guess it's a case of, you know, so like there might be like the imposter syndrome type thing, right? And ultimately, yeah. if you just remove the focus away from you and highlight other people's stories of transformation, then, I mean, you're just literally a mechanism. You're just a mechanism in the flow. So if you, um, can kind of potentially look at, you know, there's a few individuals that might stand out. If you thought right now, who are the most uh, kind of the most interesting transformation stories that you've experienced, right? Like I'm sure they come to your mind pretty quickly. So say, say those stories in saying those stories, you're just basically a, a kind of a reflection of like this stuff happened, you know, and I'm just telling you about it. It's not about me, but if you're interested, cool. Like maybe this, like maybe we can unlock this too. And I think there's that, um, that idea that sometimes it's, uh, it's about where we kind of draw attention. And then the, the attempt, like if I was looking at a painting, right, you might not be into art, but you might see that I'm looking at this painting with real kind of focus and awe. And I, I love this thing, which makes you look at the painting. Right. So maybe it is, it's not about me. It's about how I'm conveying this story of transformation. And then someone will come along and be like, that's a really cool story of transformation. And it will inspire them, you know, to maybe do something for themselves, maybe engage with you. And ultimately it doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be like, Hey, this is the story. So come and speak to me about this and and like do the sale. Like, like we've kind of discussed earlier on the lightness of it might be let me just tell you three stories of transformation. And this is what I love. Thanks for your time. <laughs> you know, you don't even need to put a sale in there, right? It could yeah. just be like, this is who you are. You would do this regardless of if you're being paid or not, basically. Right. Yeah. And, and then hopefully that control. Enjoying. Yeah. And yeah, hopefully that removes like the focus. The yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you've, you've got it yeah. right. And it makes it so much easier because you articulate, well, even though like you might feel it difficult to articulate some of the stories, you literally just told it to me now and you articulated it fine. So you could strip the audio from this call, transcribe that little bit, and then just edit it post, you know? And I think it's always about, you know, in conversation, we're always much better um, because we recognize, you know, it's just easy. We, we get it out. So sometimes I, I found recording myself is an easy way to create an article, right? The written stuff, um, because it just comes out a little bit more fluid and a bit more, a bit more passion, the right words, because I'm not thinking about it. I'm just trying to tell you, like I'm trying to convey, I'm trying to communicate. That's the focus. So the, the story then fits into that. Yeah. Well, two things I'm taking as actions that I've like, because since this, triggered in me last week I've been thinking about how am I going to overcome this so I have done things like public speaking in the past because I used to find that coordination between my thoughts and what actually came out of my mouth was it was like a little disconnect so yeah. I've done some like public speaking things so I have a few uh, and I've done like drama on stage and stuff like amateur drama awesome <laughs> that's cool so, it, so but that's like in a persona, not like in a in a character, mm. not uh, not myself. Yeah. But so I've written to a few of the local schools and local places where they like to invite people to speak, and I've just said like, 
for free. I'd like to just come and speak to your students or, awesome. you know, to your group, just to get used to articulating what I do. Yeah. Um, and, and two different audiences and just get that flow a bit better for myself. So I've pushed myself out there. Let's see what happens. That, that's yeah. awesome. Again, if you like kids love stories, right? They, they'll, they'll hang on stories, especially if it's very visual, you know, and what you could do is like, so I've told you this, these stories, how would you describe this back to your parents? You know, and then the kids might have a really mm-hmm. succinct, simple way of saying, this lady helps people get to the next level. Okay, great. Like, I'll write that down. You know, you never know. It, it, it might be that, you know, typically business is like, okay, what's your, you know, what, what's your blur? Like, what's your 30, 30 second pitch and stuff? And I, I've always found that difficult because it's, it's me. My business values are my values, you know, so interconnected with you as a character or sorry, not as a character, as in your characteristics. So it's so difficult to detach. And ultimately, the more you speak to someone, the more that they can tell you what type of kind of blurb that you should have, what type of, you know, values or, or what are some of the call outs that sound more interesting, um, you know, and then that can be forced into to kind of some of the articulation. You know, because then in a, in, a, in a pitch, you could be like, so I went to a school the other day and I told three stories of transformation. These were the three stories. And I asked the kids at the end, how would they describe this to their parents? And one kid just said, this lady helps people get to the next level. And I felt that that was such a succinct way of saying it. So I am a lady that helps people to get to the next level. Thanks for listening. Like that already yeah. is a different level than... So we take people and we do the and, and kind of the the yeah. stodginess of a of a blurb that typically all of us we all need to have a business plan, don't we? Well, not all the time. It's the creativity, it's the connection, it's the people, right? Yeah. And I think that is just a again, these are just food for thought. So you can kind of take what yeah. you find uh, inspiring and helpful. But you know, who knows? All right? inspiring. You're yeah. inspiring me to loosen up and be more take approach it more light in a in a more light way rather than um, getting caught up, you know, like, yeah. And and, and I like that light way because I am quite, for my age, (laughs) without being ages, but for my age, I am quite like um, childlike. So, and I like that approach. I just need to find that rhythm of being in that way. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that you're not professional. I think people feel that professionalism is tied to a certain thing. Like I just said this story and you would say, oh, that was professional. You know, there's no like disconnect. It doesn't mean, you know, in going that route that it means that, oh, it's not professional and therefore I'm not going to engage or anything like that. And it's trying to just break down. And yeah, as you said, like just bring some lightness to all this stuff because you know, again, this is one talk of a thousand talks, <laughs> you, yeah. you, you know, one pitch of a thousand pitches. So, you know, get this first one out the way, you know, it's, it's that kind of approach. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're feeling like, and I think again, n- n- there's no mindset or there's no thoughts that turn up overnight. So the unwinding of that is first identifying it, which you have. And the second is just start unwinding it and it's not going to happen overnight and that's fine. You know, it's about, you know, switching to just telling people about stories of transformation. I would love to hear them. Like, you know, I'd love to see them on YouTube. I'm going to do three. I'm going to do three before we speak next. Yeah, Yeah. that's, that's awesome. Even if it's, that's my, yeah, yeah. Even if I just see one, like, it'd be great to know because this is building the picture of what inspires you, you know, what makes you tick and and some of the intricacies of, of that which is great. Awesome. Okay. Well, it's an absolute pleasure speaking to you as always. Yeah, and um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your week and we'll chat again next week. You too. All right. Take care. Right. Bye. Thank you so much. Take no care. worries. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Dan Ryland's podcast today. Hopefully you've took something away from this session and please do tweet Dan 
or DM him via Twitter or Instagram or looked at his LinkedIn if you have any more questions about today or anything about your personal business that you might be struggling about that Dan might be able to help. Hope you have found this enjoyable and see you next time.